So hi, everybody. I'm Doris. Uh, I'm international marketing specialist here at Tallinn University. And today, uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you briefly about Tallinn University overall. Uh, then my colleague will continue uh, to introduce you the Institute of Political Science and Governance and their master's program in international relations. Then I will continue with the mission procedure, student life, uh, and I'm going to tell you briefly about our campus also. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them uh, on the chat window. My colleagues Jana and Nella will try to answer to all of your questions. And later on, of course, I can answer them also. So let's start. First of all, a few quick facts about Tallinn University overall. Uh, our university, as it is today, was established in 2005 as a merger of different academic institutes and units. At the moment, we have approximately 10,000 students studying here at uh, BA, MA and PhD level, among whom 700 of them are foreigners. Uh, there are degree students and exchange students. Most of our degree students are from Finland, then from Turkey, Russia, from Latvia, Lithuania, and so on. We have 1,200 staff members, uh, among whom 9.4% are uh, academic foreigners, are foreign academics, uh, which is one of the highest percentages we have here in Estonian universities. We have 250 partner universities, which means uh, for example, if you come here to study and want to go to study abroad for a semester or a year with, uh, with Erasmus, for example, you have a wide variety of universities to choose among. And at the moment, we have 26 academic units. And as I said, one of the, one of the institutes will introduce their English-based program today. Our university defines ourselves as a, as a leader and developer of smart lifestyle in Estonia. Uh, and we have directed our resources and activities into five broad focus fields. Education and innovation, cultural competences, open society and governance, digital and media culture, and healthy and sustainable lifestyle. Uh, we believe in individual approach to students. By that, I mean our stu study groups are rather small, so all of the students have the possibility to talk to the lecturer, get advice, ask questions, and so on. Uh, our campus is located in the heart of the city center. Uh, it's only 10 minutes uh, walk away from the old town that belongs to the UNESCO World Heritage, only five minutes from the harbor, and airport and the bus station are also nearby. Our facilities include uh, modern study rooms, uh, classrooms, computer classes, laboratories, and so on. We, uh, we even have our own cinema hall here in the Baltic Film and Media School, where all our, our students can go and see films for free. But now uh, I will give the floor to my colleague, who will tell you more in detail about the Institute of Political Science and Government. Hi, so my name is Matthew. I'm a faculty member here at Tallinn University, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad that I have this chance to talk a little bit about our institute and our program. So our program, uh, our institute, is the Institute of Political Science and Governance, and so it's a large institute, um, the largest in Estonia, and we teach a lot of uh, different programs, different courses, uh, political science, public administration, international relations. Uh, and some economic courses as well that fit into the module. We do a lot of teaching um, in Estonian for Estonian students, as well as quite a bit of uh, teaching in English, obviously for you guys and uh, the other English students that we have. We have three research tracks, political science, governance, and international relations. And so while you guys are interested in international relations, this is still important to note because uh, sometimes you'll be taking courses from some of the other teachers uh, who are in political science or maybe governance, uh, talking about global governance and some other relevant issues. So that means that we have a, a large base of faculty members we can draw on um, for the courses. And that's good because uh, you want diversity in your, your teaching and you want diversity in your experience uh, through education. Uh, as uh, Doris already uh, mentioned, if you have any questions, feel free to um, enter them into the chat. And so I'm going to start off um, 
or continue on with the program uh, on international relations, which is why you guys uh, signed up to hear more about uh, this um, program. And so I'm a teacher, and I teach the courses in international relations uh, in the program. And um, it's a great program. I can definitely recommend it to you guys. And so some of the things, it's a two-year MA program. Um, you'll see uh, different types of MA programs out there. This is a, a good standard MA program. Um, it's two years, and it's um, at a good pace. So you should be able to easily finish in two years. Um, we try to start off uh, already in year one and working on your MA thesis so that at the end of year two, you'll be ready to defend. Uh, there shouldn't be a situation where you're not ready, uh, you don't know what you're doing with your thesis, or it takes more time. Uh, we try hard to work with our students from the right from the beginning so that you can graduate on time in two years. Uh, the cost is uh, 1,200 euros a semester, uh, which um, if you compare with other universities in Estonia, in the region, um, right, certainly UK, uh, it's a pretty uh, cost-effective um, uh, cost effective price. One thing that um, our students have liked a lot in the past about our program is the, the wide selection that they have uh, from the coursework. And so we have two different specialization modules. Uh, one module is globalization and regional cooperation, uh, and the other is international security and conflict studies. And so you'll notice that um, the number of courses that we have um, under those modules is pretty wide especially when you take into consideration the elective courses, there's a, a good uh, broad selection that you can choose from. And that is good for you guys because you want a program where you have choices uh, and you have selections and you can uh, tailor your education to what you um, what you want to study. And in terms of MA thesis, uh, again, um, as I mentioned, we start from the beginning. We have uh, MA seminars um, and uh, good supervisors who will work with you from day one throughout the entire two-year period, who will help you develop um, and uh, develop your skills as a researcher, skills as a scholar, as well as get into detail on the topic that you are interested in. Um, traditionally, we've had a, a broad understanding of what international relations means. Um, so we go beyond just interstate relations. We go beyond just standard war and balance of power. Um, we encourage our students to look for uh, international relations and non-traditional avenues. Uh, we uh, encourage our students to um, be creative and innovative with their approaches to the discipline. Uh, and so we've uh, seen a wide range of, of very high quality uh, theses um, and theses that students uh, have been very happy with. And so all of you who are here today are certainly considering a, a wide option of, of programs um, and judging from those who have registered uh, where you're coming from, you're probably considering uh, programs on different continents as well, not just uh, the region. So why should you choose this program? I'm going to mention the wide selection of uh, courses that we have to offer, um, but also this is a really great uh, environment uh, to come into study. So um, also we have study trips, um, and right now these are carried out on an unofficial basis, uh, so we don't have permanent contracts. Um, but we have uh, been successful in taking um, study trips uh, to NATO headquarters. Uh, the NATO public uh, diplomacy uh, completely funds the trips. So this is a, a, a trip that's free of charge going to NATO headquarters in Brussels where we've uh, had seminars. And we've done that twice already. Um, and a third should be coming um, this year as well. We've had trips to the European Parliament uh, where Estonian members of Parliament have uh, hosted our students um, and given them uh, updates on how the European Parliament works. And that's good for you so you can see how things actually work on the ground. Uh, while we can talk about things, um, it's good to actually go to the center uh, of some of these organizations and, and see how it really works. We have an active, uh, active student organization, the International Relations Society, which is led by students. And they have a, a number of uh, excellent activities, field trips. Uh, this year they went to Narva, a border city with Russia. Uh, they have uh, movie nights. They have guest speakers bringing in um, uh, influential people from Estonia to talk about relevant uh, topics. Um, this last year there is a debate about Scottish independence before the uh, the referendum in Scotland and so a really great opportunity to uh, not just broaden your education but also get to know your fellow students uh, and uh, take your education to the next level by, uh, 
by organizing events that, that work for you. Some of the staff, um, uh, so again, who would actually be doing the teaching? And this is just a, a, a partial selection of some of the professors. Uh, Mika Altula is a professor from Finland. Um, he's also the head of the Finnish Institute of Foreign Affairs. Um, he's taught in the United States um, and has published on a wide range of topics, um, U.S. foreign policy, uh, small state foreign policy, um, also focusing a lot on the global flows. Um, so the global flows of uh, different goods uh, and uh, a lot of innovative uh, approaches uh, to the discipline. Jyrki Kakunen, another professor from Finland, and he has also published on a wide range of topics, including the BRICS. Um, again, we have a very diverse approach to the discipline, uh, both geographically as well as topically. So he's um, taught courses on India and China and done a lot of research in those areas. Um, advised the Estonian Parliament on the Asian strategies uh, as well. My name is Matthew Crandall. I'm from the United States. Uh, I've been living in uh, and uh, working in Estonia for quite a while. Uh, my area of uh, expertise is small state uh, security, looking at cyber security, energy security, uh, and some of those uh, relevant topics. Katlin Kierna is a colleague uh, who is Estonian, and she's also done quite a bit of uh, research on small state foreign policy, Estonian foreign policy, as well as uh, European regionalism and integration. And Tio Ho is another Estonian colleague. Um, she's worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and is a security expert. Uh, worked a lot on traditional security, but also uh, other types such as uh, energy and cyber security. One thing we should also notice um, or note is the diverse student body. And in a lot of my courses, one of the things that my students like the most is having such a diverse student body. And so when I looked at those who were registered, they were from South America, uh, from Russia, from Turkey, uh, different places uh, in Europe. And that's actually a good reflection of the students that we have right now as well. Uh, we have students from Africa, we have students from South America, students from Brazil, uh, Chile. Um, we have students uh, from Turkey, we have students from Finland. Um, and so uh, very diverse students from Estonia as well, of course. So very diverse student body, and that's really great to uh, to get these different ideas um, and different perspectives on international relations. And so that's another great reason to come, uh, is because Holland University has really been a place that brings the world together. And every year, um, our student body becomes more and more diverse. And um, hopefully, you'll be able to join us and, and add to that uh, diversity as well. Maybe just a, a brief overview of some of the courses on our website. You can find the curriculum, and so you can get a complete list of the courses that we offer. And um, right now, we're in the process of uh, making some minor changes to add a few more courses um, that could be a little more interesting to some of you as well. Uh, but just to highlight a, a few of the courses that we're offering, uh, Intellectual History of International Relations, to give you a good philosophical base uh, to the concepts that we're talking about in the theories that we discussed. BRICS as a new balance builder. So Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South um, Africa, and specifically what is their role in the changes in the world system that are going on. India and China in world politics, globalization theory, energy security, non-traditional security. Uh, and so these are some of the, uh, the topics that we are dealing with. Um, most likely some of the courses that will be implemented for your time of study, uh, transatlantic cooperation, uh, the small state diplomacy and uh, security, um, and again, uh, focus on, on some of these newer upcoming um, issues and trends uh, that we're dealing with. After graduation, and so I think this is probably the, the question, even though you haven't started, uh, you're asking, and, and this is a, an answer that's really relevant for whatever program uh, you would choose, um, what do you do with a degree in international relations? And International relations isn't a program like uh, medical school where you immediately go into the very specific uh, position. Um, it's open. And so in a lot of ways, it depends on you, but there are a lot of opportunities that are available for you. Um, so there's opportunities in government, uh, whether uh, in your home countries uh, or, 
or elsewhere, uh, opportunities in academia, uh, public and private sectors. Maybe some specific examples. Um, we've had MA students who have gone on to do their PhDs. One is currently a PhD here at Tallinn University, studying international relations, uh, looking at um, uh, different uh, currency markets and the changes in uh, currency trading from an IR standpoint, um, right? How um, that could influence uh, democratic constraints and so on. We have um, students who have worked for NGOs, so the National Democracy Institute, which is located here in Tallinn. We've had students uh, who are working there as well, dealing with uh, democracy promotion in Russia. Uh, we have students working in the uh, Ministry of Defense here in Estonia, uh, as well as other governmental institutions as well. So there's a broad um, a range of, of career choices and career paths you can take with a degree in IR. And I think you'll notice that, that one of the main goals that we have is to increase your analytical abilities, uh, to increase your understanding of the world, the different processes that are going on uh, with what's happening. And so hopefully that skill set will then be applicable uh, in a wide range um, of job opportunities, whether it's here in Estonia, here in Europe, or back in your home countries, wherever uh, that might be. And um, does anyone have any questions for me uh, or specific about our IR program? Whether the courses or the teachers, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, Franka has a question. So yes, you can ask anything you'd like to, Franka. Go ahead. From uh, Buenos Aires. Um, attending classes every day on the week. Um, the program is uh, a standard-based program. So in the sense that we have classes from Monday to Friday. Different courses will be organized uh, in different ways. Uh, so sometimes you'll have courses that right, maybe meet every other week. Um, the standard format is that um, a course will be every uh, one day a week. Um, and oftentimes, it's not all of them, but a lot of the courses are in the evening. So starting at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock, and they'll be going to 7 or 8 o'clock. And part of that is because there's a, um, a lot of Estonian students, as well as foreign students, who uh, work during the day, um, either full-time or part-time, and then um, come to classes at night. So that's not true with every um, class, but a lot of the courses are in the evening, and that provides a lot of flexibility for students. Uh, but traditionally, you'll have class once a week for the course, and so when you add in, right, three or four, five or six courses a semester, and you'll probably have classes, um, you know, either every day, Monday through Friday, or maybe four days of the week, depending on your specific uh, class schedule. That's a good question. Any other questions that someone would like to ask? Okay, Roger, go ahead. Maybe while Roger's uh, typing his question um, with Franca, if something does happen, so say one week you are out of country, um, you can talk to your teachers about um, the specific attendance requirements for the classes. A lot of teachers are flexible, so if you do right, take a trip back home or something else, um, you can still be flexible in terms of doing extra work within the, the framework of that course um, if something happens where you, you were gone. Um, so I think there is quite a bit of flexibility involved as well, uh, but that would usually happen on an individual level. Okay, so Roger. Um, from Cameroon, we have students from Cameroon, uh, just so you know. Uh, and yes, you can apply for this program. Uh, we do prefer candidates who have a, a background in IR, who have a degree in IR or political science. Um, but we do accept candidates who have a, a degree in a different background. And economics is a degree that is in IR, but it's a, it's a good degree because IR is a discipline that's really based off of other disciplines. Right. So what is IR? Well, somehow a mix, right? You have anthropology, political science, you have history, you have law, and economics. And so by having a degree in economics, um, while you'll still need to um, get caught up to speed, um, you at least still have a good base that's relevant, right? It's not as if you're a right, um, theater history major, right, with a completely different background. So economics is definitely relevant and uh, absolutely apply. One of the optional courses that we have is an introduction to international relations, which is designed just for people like you, uh, Roger, who don't have a strong background in IR. So again, we try to kind of get you caught up to speed right in the first semester with that overall introductory course. Uh, Franca says, can I work during the semester? Um, yes. And I think there is actually um, a recent change in the living permit or, or visa requirements in Estonia. 
that now if you have a student or if you have a living permit based on a student's, um, if that's the reason, right, your uh, student um, studies living permit, that also enables you to work, um, which makes it a lot easier to actually get a job. Um, before, it was kind of a complicated system where you had to apply for another work permit, um, which was problematic. So yes, you can work during a semester. Uh, most of our students do work. Um, and what surprises me is that most of our foreign students work as well. Um, and so they've had a number of different jobs. Um, one worked at a call center in uh, for Microsoft. Uh, one worked um, in a hotel, um, uh, just I think at the reception. Or um, And so students have been somewhat um, innovative in, in finding jobs. And so it is going to be more difficult to find jobs if you don't speak Estonian. Um, at the same time, this is uh, right one of the capitals of Europe. And so there are jobs for people who don't speak Estonian. Um, so yes, you can work, um, and then it's up to you to manage your schedule. It's up to you to kind of make things work, right? That does make it very busy, um, but most students do it. Most students make it work, um, even those who don't speak Estonian, who do come from South America and other countries as well. That was a good question. Other questions? I'd be happy to answer. If not, then uh, I'll turn the time back over to Dori. Uh, thank you again. And uh, if something does come up, feel free to, to ask a question in the, the framework of this um, program. Also, you can find my email address um, on the web page. And so you can always send me an email uh, later on as well um, if something else comes up later. One uh, question from Franca. Um, well, I can learn Estonian language, can't I? And yes, you can. Um, and I speak Estonian, and I'm not Estonian. Um, so it's a difficult language, but certainly doable. And they do offer language courses here at Holland University to make that a lot easier. So yes, you can absolutely, absolutely learn Estonian. It just usually takes most people a little bit of time to learn it to a level where they could use it uh, in their job um, skills. Okay, thank you very much. So hi again, me here. And I will continue with the admission procedure and the living costs here. But, but first of all, uh, a lot of uh, applicants ask about scholarships. We do not offer scholarships, but what we do have are study allowances uh, when you are already a student of Thai University. Uh, one option is to have an East based study allowance for students from financially disadvantaged backgrounds. Uh, the allowance is 75 up to 220 euros uh, per month during the whole study period. And uh, there is also a study allowance based on your study results, uh, which is 100 euros per month during one semester. Uh, that means if you have a good average grade, uh, most probably you will get the allowance, but you have to apply each semester. So each semester your grades will be checked, and according to your average grade, grade you will be given the allowance or not. So the admission requirements for international students. Uh, first of all, you have to be aware of the, aware of the deadlines. Uh, for non-EU students, except students from Russia, Turkey, and Ukraine, the deadline is 1st of May. For students from EU, Russia, Turkey, and Ukraine, the deadline is 1st of July. So you still have a lot of time to fill in the application. And uh, first of all, you have to go to estonia.dreamapply.com and fill in the online application form there. Then, after you have filled up the online application form and paid the application fee, which is 80 euros, uh, you need to send to us the online application cover, which has to be printed and signed, and a copy of bachelor's degree certificate uh, and transcript of record. And the translation is uh, requested if the documents are not in English. And both of the copies and translations must be attested by notary. Then, after that, you need to prove your English proficiency. Uh, you have to have English at least on B2 level to come and study at Italian University. You can prove your English with the most well-known test as Yelts or Zwerfel. Uh, after you have done the exam, they will just uh, forward the exam results uh, to our university. Or EU students also have the possibility to carry out the language test here at Italian University. But for that, you have to travel to Tallinn. And after that, uh, you can upload your online application system, uh, the copy of the identification page of your passport and receipt uh, of payment of the application fee. 
Also, some of the countries have country-specific requirements. For example, for Finnish students, uh, from students from Finland, if you have graduated with cum laude, you don't have to prove your English proficiency. There are some other countries that have country-specific requirements, but for that, I suggest you to go to our webpage and uh, see if uh, some of the requirements apply for you too or not. After you have done all that, you still need to pass the program-specific requirements. And for International Relations MA, uh, the program-specific requirements, a letter of motivation and an interview with the admission committee. And the interview can be done via Skype, so you don't have to travel to Estonia for that. A uh, few words about the student life also. Uh, we have here our own student union. Uh, and under the student union, there are different units and organizations. For example, International Club, which organizes events for international students. ASN Thailand for exchange students, our own student TV that broadcasts the, the latest news, our own culture club, sports club, photo club, culture collectives. We have even our own student cafe, was and the child care. And of course, you can take part of all the activities, all the organizations, all the whatever they do there. A few words about the accommodation. Uh, our applicants often ask, do we have dormitories? Yes, we do. But you have to act rather quick if you want to have a place at the door. Uh, we have our own dormitory, Thai University dormitory, that's just around the corner, so again in the heart of the city center. There are double rooms, and the price for, per month is 170 euros and 50 cents. There's also a cheap, cheap rest dormitory a bit further away, but still in downtown. There are double and single rooms. Uh, double rooms are 170 euros, single rooms 340 euros. Also, a deco dormitory where are a double and triple room, and the price for both is 150 euros. Of course, you always have the possibility to rent an apartment here in Thailand by yourself, with your friends, with your course mates. Uh, the prices vary. Uh, it is possible to get an apartment for 200 euros, but the prices go up to 400, 500, 600 euros. Uh, if you want to know more about the accommodation, go to tlu.de slash housing. And there are, uh, on the website, you find a list of different online platforms also, where are listed like, all the offers for renting an apartment. So here you can see how the apartments look like, look, and what are the prices. Uh, cost of living in Tallinn. The monthly living costs are approximately 300 to 500 euros, not including the accommodation. Of course, it depends on your, on yourself, how much you want to spend, how much can you spend. But here are just a few examples. For example, the student meals here at the university are from 3 to 7 euros. The public transportation, for example, is free for residents of Tallinn. Uh, theater tickets are 12 to 18 euros. Concert tickets, 8 to 13 euros, and so on. About work and internship. Already, uh, Vanka had a question about work. Once again, yes, you can work during your studies. Uh, there is a possibility you can turn to your institute, ask some contacts where to, where to find, find a job or get an internship, for example. Uh, you can go and ask advice from our own career and counseling center, or you can look one yourself. Uh, we have, again, different uh, online platforms where uh, different organizations put up their, uh, put up their job offers. Uh, go to studyinestonia.de slash working to learn more about uh, working possibilities. So a few words about the campus. Uh, all, of, uh, all of the buildings here in the main campus have Latin names, so our students could recognize them, where they have to go, and where is the classroom. Uh, first of all, Terra. If it is the oldest uh, building of Tallinn University, Terra means uh, the earth and represents academic traditions. In this building, all the central services are located, for example, uh, marketing office, acad academic affairs office, and so on. And also some of the classrooms are here at the Terra building. Then Astra. Astra is the newest addition to, uh, to the main campus. It was built in 2012. Astra, meaning the stars, represents uh, achieving your goals. Different institutes are located in, in Astra. Silva Forest represents researchers. Uh, Silva is also known as the language building. Nova, new, represents innovation. Nova houses Baltic Film and Media School of Tallinn University. There are all uh, different kinds of sound editing studios, editing rooms, computer classes. Uh, 
television studio, film studio, and as I said before, our own cinema hall. Then Ursa, a bear, represents defending your own ideas. Uh, Ursa houses the Institute of Fine Arts. And then Mara, C, represents openness. And again, as in Astra, Mara houses different institutes. It has a lot of seminar rooms, classrooms, and so on. Here are just a few pictures uh, inside and outside of the buildings. So a few words about our Italian summer and winter school also. Uh, we covered the possibilities to have a deg degree or in international relations, but the Thai University also offers short courses in, in the summer and in the winter. Uh, the summer school is in July from 13th to 31st. Uh, winter school is usually in January. Uh, next year it will be in Jan January 4th to 22nd. Uh, during the summer school, we have a lot of participants, uh, approximately 350 participants. During the winter school, a bit less, approximately 60 participants. And every year, among the participants, up to 85% are international students. So again, great experience, uh, great chance to meet with uh, different nationalities, different, uh, with different people. Uh, during the summertime, we offer 25 different courses. Uh, language courses, creative courses, and so on. And in addition to the courses, uh, the participants can take part of the cultural program. Uh, visit, they can visit the museums or go to field trips uh, outside of Tallinn. Uh, if you may be interested in the Tallinn Summer or Winter School, go to summerschool.tlu.de or winterschool.tlu.de. If you maybe have uh, questions directly to our students or alumni, uh, then you can go to tlu.de slash ambassadors. There are listed uh, all, all of our students and alumni that represent our different English-based programs. Uh, there is also a person from International Relations Master's Program, so you can directly contact uh, him or her and ask about uh, their study experience, what they think about living in Tallinn, what they think about the program, what they think about Tallinn University overall. So if you go to that website, you can uh, you can see the email and write to them. And last but not least, I suggest you to follow us uh, in social media so you can keep up with the latest news and latest doings. Uh, at Facebook, you can find us if you type in Tallinn University. We are also at Vekontakti, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Draugiam and LinkedIn. So if you have any questions, uh, for example, uh, admission procedure, then you can contact directly our admission specialist. Uh, the email address is admissions at tlu.ee. But meanwhile, you can go to our website and see for mo more information about the programs, institutes, and university overall. Our website is tlu.ee.